Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Turmel, and this is the second post on how the great Canadian gambler got involved in politics. So this is the lead up to March 1979. Part two. So the police were also searching for the three million as the proceeds of crime. It had been different in Toronto. There the police had told me to get out of town with my ill-gotten gains, or they'd charge me. The Ottawa police gave me no such choice. If I lose, penalties might be stiff. The new proceeds of crime laws mandate that I be left broke to avoid going to jail. Luckily, as reported in the Ottawa Sun quote of the week, I knew they weren't going to let me keep it, so I spent it all. But I faced fines of millions, which meant up to 10 years in jail for a broke man who can't buy his way out. They had wanted me to come to Ottawa and to give myself up to their search warrant, or they'd issue an arrest warrant for me Canada-wide. Well, usually keepers of gaming houses are arrested on the search warrant. But I'd been expecting them and had hidden out for months while my Ottawa casino hummed along. I was in no mood to save them trouble and said I'd prepared, I had to prepare my defense before giving myself up. Sergeant Cleary kept calling my lady Pauline Morissette, asking that I give myself up or issue a Canada-wide arrest warrant. But I stayed holed up in Toronto, writing an affidavit in verse, iambic pentameter, of over 400 lines telling my story, which took about a week. Finally, the police announced at a press conference that a Canada-wide arrest warrant had been issued. I made a beeline to Ottawa to give myself up. The next day, many of our 122 casino employees marched outside the courthouse to protest losing their jobs, but there was nothing that anyone was going to be able to do about it. Now that the government had decided to use the Justice Department to attack me again, even if I'm acquitted again, the head start I had in the industry will be gone. If they show no case for charging a formally acquitted person again, it'll be safe to say I'm one of the biggest robbery victims in Canadian history. What's even more unusual is that it was the government of Ontario that was doing the robbing. Should I be acquitted once again, you can bet I'll sue them for a billion. Now here I was, an electrical engineering graduate, publicly manacled in my hometown once again. Carleton University, my alma mater, certainly couldn't have been very proud. They had many clues I wasn't going to be an ordinary engineer. My engineering project was a computer program on poker after I'd aced the new mathematics course which Carlton had just authorized and which directly led me to Vegas. It was the mathematics of gambling taught by Dr. Walter Schneider who'd also taught me my second year engineering mathematics and played in our friendly legal no rake off poker game. In the gambling course I learned about games that can be beaten in casinos and games that cannot. I learned how to beat blackjack I turned out to be Walter's star pupil and he gave me an A+. After reading several books, my winning rate at poker increased by 100% from 8 bucks an hour to 20 an hour in 1974. One day, Walter and I were having lunch at a local restaurant and hit upon the notion of an optimal betting curve, which could guarantee, when chasing a better hand, catching all situations where the odds are good enough to call, and avoiding all situations where they're not good enough to call, and, as a corollary, to guarantee, when in the lead, never giving an opponent a situation where the odds are good enough for him to call. Such a computer analysis had never been done and Walter suggested that I apply to have a computer analysis of Canadian stud accepted as my fourth year engineering project. And I did it with APL, a programming language, a very powerful new language at the time. Canadian stud, the most popular game in Canada at that point, was played just like five card stud, but where one pair was beaten by a four straight, which was in turn beaten by a four flush, which was then beaten by two pairs. A simple variation. My project was presented to the 1976 Third Conference on Gambling at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas on December 21st, 1976. I have been accredited six times by courts in Ontario and Quebec to give expert testimony in matters related to gambling. By using, using the betting system devised in a computer analysis, the slope of my poker winnings at Canadian Stud went up another 150%. Rather than become a professional electrical engineer, I chose to specialize in the profession of gambling, statistical engineering if you would, and became the teaching assistant of the Math 69140 course for four more years until 1978 when Professor Schneider had to dismiss me for running a highly publicized blackjack game in the Carlton University faculty club as part of my legalization campaign.
So in November 1974, I went on my first five-day, four-night junket to the Thunderbird Casino Hotel in Las Vegas from Toronto. I needed to bring a bankroll of $3,000. And don't forget, a brand new car cost $4,000 in those days. I need a brand new Ford, you know. I needed to bring a bankroll of $3,000 and had to bet a minimum of $15 for at least 10 hours over the next five days. Well, I didn't have $3,000. So I approached my mother, who went to the bank to borrow the equivalent of two and a half years worth of rent to send me to Vegas to take on the pros. Teresa Turmel, my mama. That's what I call faith. Not many mothers would go borrow to provide their sons with a bankroll to gamble. Mine did. It sure did pay off, though. Maybe my proficiency in betting on winners is genetic. I learned the Revere point count system a few days before leaving, and after playing a total of 40 hours, I ended up with a $1,600 profit, a nice start to my junketing career. I went on junkets to almost all the casinos in Vegas from 74 to 79. I traveled on over 55 different junkets. The most unique was a trip aboard Caesar's Chariot, a converted 707 that seated only 45 passengers in luxury. It was the most opulent, luxurious plane I've ever Boy, did we come up with some ways to scam Vegas. All honest, all legit. Remember, the rules are they want 10 hours of action, a $25 minimum bet, and that's all they want to qualify. But here's what happens. Some casinos had junkets where they would charter a plane and fly a whole plane load of people down. But others didn't. So they would offer to fly you down and pick up your airfare if you gave them that action. So what I would do is I would book an airline ticket and then I would book a junket at the same time. I would fly down on the junket and I would bring the airline ticket with me. I would then go and register in both casinos. I would give both casinos a required action to satisfy the requirements for a junket. And the second casino would reimburse me for the ticket I didn't use. And then when I got back to Canada, I cashed it in for $400. Now that's pretty good, eh? You give them the action they want and the guy who wants to pick up your airline ticket? Sure, it doesn't mean I have to use it, does it? 400 a trip that way. At the time, Canadian money was worth more than American. 2%. So you had a whole plane load of Canadians going down and they brought their Canadian along because the casinos accepted it at par. And at the end of the trip, they'd say, you want your Canadian back? We still got it. And most Canadians went, okay. Well, I took $9,800. I'd go to the bank. I'd buy 10 grand American. I'd bring American down, get all these chips in my hand. And when I cash out at the end of the trip, they go, you want Canadian? I go, yeah. And I'd come back and I'd take 9,800 of the Canadian, bank 200 in profit, and go do it again, buy another 10 grand American. So every trip I was making 200 bucks in exchange. As well, I offered anybody who wanted to come on an all expense paid trip to Caesar's Palace, five days, four nights, give me 200 bucks, I'll bring you as my guest. Because everybody was allowed to have a guest with a credit card for the room that was complimentary and all picked up by everybody. So I, for instance, I could go down as a gambler. My brother Ray could go down as a gambler and I would take a guy down and Ray would take the wife down. Ray and I would stay in our room. The husband and wife would stay in the other room. <laughs> they paid us 400 bucks for an all expense paid trip to Caesar's Palace for the week. So at the end of a trip, we could each make 200 in exchange, each make a $400 airline ticket, each make 200 more in guest. That's like $1,600 on a trip, just in extras, by doing exactly what the casinos want to do. Give them the action they want. And when you play craps, $25 minimum, you're losing 14 bucks an hour. And if you give them 10 hours action, you expect to lose 140 bucks. So we'd be coming home with 800 minus 140 on average every trip. So why wouldn't I want to do this every month? Actually, every week for 13 weeks in a row. And the final was how to get comps out of the casinos. I'd wander in and I'd buy myself two, three thousand bucks in black chips. I'd go to the crap table, lay a hundred on a don't pass, point would come up, lay 400 more to get two at even money. Total cost of the bet, a buck 40 on the first hundred, the other 400 free. Then I lay another hundred on a don't pass. Another point comes up, say 10. Lay another 400 to two 
And again, it's only costing me a buck forty. Now I got maybe another don't come bet, and another point comes up, and I lay full odds. Then I call the pit boss over when I got over a grand in chips on the table and say, hey, me and my friends would like to come to the dinner show tonight. Like, Can you arrange that? Oh, sure, sure. How many people are in your party? Six, please. Dinner show or the uh, or the night supper show? Oh, we'll take the supper show with the meals, you know. So we'd go there, six people, then I'd play a little while longer and then leave. So after maybe 10, 15 decisions, I might have done an expected loss of $28. And for that $28 in lost gambling, I got a comp for six people. It's going to cost 40 bucks each. And we got to go to those kind of things that you just have to be willing to take the flip of the coin for the thousand bucks, put the big money on the table, and they think you're a high roller and they treat you like one. So those were the neat ways we took advantage of Vegas.